In this video, I will show you how to set up an authenticator in the Curity Identity Server, and I will also show you how to create some different facilities necessary for configuring that authenticator. Those will be things like an HTTP client as well as uh, some cryptographic keys. I will also extend the uh, Python application that you can get on uh, GitHub to check for the authentication method that was used and show you how you can change the request to ask for different authenticators and to verify how authentication was done. So in case you missed the other video, you can find a link here. Uh, and what I've, uh, after you watch that video and follow the steps there, you'll have a configuration like mine, which starts with the uh, sample configuration where we have a, an OAuth profile and an authentication profile. And in this OAuth profile, in that previous video, I set up an, a new client, which I called uh, Python app. And this is that uh, GitHub sample that I told you about where this client has a, an OpenID Connect scope, uh, the callback handler, which we're going to modify the uh, some of the code for, is at that address. And then uh, I have a secret and I only support the code flow in this client. If we go to this client now, this is it running, and I can sign in. And the only authenticator I have at the moment is an HTML form that's connected to a uh, backend database where I have an account called John Doe. So I can go ahead and sign in here. And now I have a, an SSO cookie uh, at the authentication service uh, where I have logged in with the HTML form. And I send back an access code to the OpenID Connect client. And it redeems that code for an access token, a refresh token, and an ID token. And inside this ID token, I can see a claim called ACR, uh, which stands for Authentication Class Context Reference. And it has this value here, specifying that the user logged in with uh, HTML1 as the form. So I also have uh, an access token, which I can use to call an API. And if I call that API by clicking this button, uh, I can see that uh, the result was John Doe. Okay, so that's sort of a recap of that previous video. But now what we want to do is we want to set up a new authenticator. So here's that HTML uh, authenticator that we have, and we're going to create a different kind. And this is going to be a, a bank ID authenticator. So bank ID, in case you don't know, is a Nordic EID provider uh, that does strong authentication for uh, pretty much the entire Swedish uh, society. Uh, so everyone has a strong uh, two-factor authentication that they get through their different financial service providers. And to configure this, uh, we're going to directly communicate with, uh, with Bank ID. And so I need to create an HTTP client. And I also need to specify that I'm going to be running in test mode so I can talk to the test Bank ID servers. So I don't have an HTTP client, so I'm going to create one. But before I can do that, I also need to trust the uh, signer of the SSL certificate that the test bank ID server exposes. So let's go ahead and add a new trust anchor, a new uh, trust server, and I can just drag and drop this one in and say that uh, this is the bank ID CA cert. So now I'll trust SSL certificates signed by that uh, in some cases if configured, uh, which I'll do in a sec. And I also need to create a client um, a client key. So let's go ahead and call this one um, my bank ID client. And this is what I'm going to use to authenticate to uh, the bank ID test server. So I'll go ahead and browse for that. And I have my client key here. And this is uh, a key store. So I need to unlock it or uh, decrypt it. So I'll do that. And then now that is uh, stored in the Curity's configuration service. And with those two keys configured, I can create a new um, HTTP client. So an HTTP client is one that's used to call RESTful uh, JSON web services or for calling SOAP services like the bank ID one. And so I can say that I don't need to do like basic authentication or uh, OAuth authentication. Instead, I'm just going to use uh, mutual TLS and I will trust the, the um, certificates in my trust anchors or my trust stores uh, by toggling on that on. So now I'll, I'll uh, accept the SSL key signed by the test bank ID server and I'll use my HTTP client so that I can authenticate myself. 
and I'll go ahead and do that and now those facilities have closed I'm right back in this bank ID authenticator I was setting up and I can then specify that my HTTP client is that new one I've configured and there's going to be one other thing I'm going to do and that is to change the uh, ACR for this authenticator so in the previous example with the HTML form uh, the one that was used was just generated, but I'm going to override that to save myself some some keystrokes uh, as I get further into the demo. So I'm going to commit that. I'm going to say uh, added bank ID authenticator, or not. <laughs> and uh, so now I have that. And uh, if I come here to the application and I log out and I go ahead and log back in again, now what you'll see is two different authentication methods because this OpenID Connect relying party doesn't have any requirements on uh, just a subset of my authenticators, it shows all of them. And you can customize the look and feel of this, which we'll show you in a future video. Uh, but for right now, it just shows me like I have two choices. I can log in with the same HTML form you saw before, or I can log in with Bank ID. And now these pages, uh, like with the HTML form, are all rendered by security, but they'll communicate with that upstream authentication provider, that Bank ID web service. So Bank ID provides two ways. I can either log in on the same device uh, that I'm accessing the web application through, or I can log in on another device like my iPad or my, my iPhone. So I'll go ahead and log in on the same device because I have a um, Bank ID application uh, configured here. And I'll log in there. And now what you get back is uh, the ID token and the access token as before, but you can see here that uh, the ACR is set to be that one that we configured, uh, SV Bank ID. So now that I've done that, what can be uh, interesting is if I um, do the OAuth code flow again and ask for a specific uh, authenticator, I may not be able to log in depending on information from the request. So uh, what I've pasted here is the OAuth re uh, authorization request. And I'm specifying the OpenID Connect scope and a state and a redirect URI. This is what the Python application is doing behind the scenes. So I go ahead and, and do that and I get single sign on in with my same uh, bank ID uh, authentication method. I get this error about state because we, we didn't make it through the um, uh, Python application. But what I can do is I can add into the query string uh, an argument called ACR. And if we specify now the HTML form, which is also allowed for this application, I don't get single sign-on because I logged in with bank ID before. So I have to log in even though I have SSO and SSO worked. So I can do it uh, again uh, and ask for that uh, ACR of either of those and I should get straight in. So I can say SV bank ID and now I go straight in and now I have the uh, bank ID authenticator uh, as the authentication method and now if I this time say the HTML form I'll get single sign-on because I have logged in so in both of those sessions. So now even though I have uh, um, SSO for both of them, what I can do is I can make a request here and not specify uh, a authenticator and the one that's used is the last one where I logged in, uh, which was the Swedish bank ID. And what more I can do is I can say, actually, I don't care if you have a um, SSO session, I want to force the user to log in again. So I can add this query string force auth n equals true and it ignores the values in my SSO um, cookie and asks the user to log in. What's more is I can say not only force them to log in, uh, but I want them to log in with a particular authenticator like the bank ID one. So I want to force them to authenticate and to use that certain authenticator. And because in that request now I had SSO, but with two different authenticators, both are ignored by that force auth n, and in my request I have the ACR specifying uh, Swedish Bank ID. So even though both are configured for the app, one is ignored, and I'm presented with the first screen here. And if I log in again now, 
the off time of the resulting token is going to be the one from uh, this new authentication session uh, rather than uh, the SSO. So if I look here at off time, well, I don't really know how many seconds that is from Epoch, so I can't really say, but um, suffice it to say that it is the, the newer one um, from the new authentication. So what we can also do is we can update our Python application, and this is the call API. Uh, so what we had here is we were actually calling, making a request to the API, and it was seeing who the different users was before it was John Doe, but now this time it's the one from bank ID. So what we can do is we can update this handler to see like at this point where I know I have an access token, what I could do is I could say get the ACR, and that ACR is uh, some JSON and ID token JSON it was called, uh, and that's an array, so I want the second element in there and then in that resulting JSON I want the ACR. So now I got the ACR and I can say something like uh, if whoop, ACR is SV bank ID then do this API call. Uh, else what we should do is we should say user.api response equals a new dictionary and that dictionary will have a code in it that has a number 401 and the data should be wrong ACR let's say okay so now if we go and restart that application actually I don't even know that we need to restart it but we will um, now go here and we have that so we should be able to request the the API I'll re restarted it so but we have SSO and now so we get a new access token we request the API and that works but now let's do that uh, force authentication uh, or actually let's just log out and log back in but this time with the HTML form and now we'll call the API and the ACR here should be this HTML one so we should get access denied yeah, wrong ACR. So in this very brief video, what I showed you was how you could set up a authenticator. So I configured this bank ID authenticator and how that becomes available in my OAuth clients. Uh, I could even go so far as to change this OAuth client to say that the only uh, allowed um, uh, authenticator is down here in user authentication, I could say the only one that I actually allow is bank ID. Then I wouldn't even have to do that stuff that I showed you with like uh, the ACRs because it's simply not allowed to log in with that. So the first screen I see here is the bank ID. So what, I, what I've shown you is that you can configure authenticators, you can set up uh, cryptographic keys, you can use those in HTTP clients. Uh, those authenticators can be changed based on the request uh, parameters and um, whether or not you have uh, SSO with those authenticators, you can override that in the request and you can configure authenticators per each client. And then you can know within your APIs and your, your web services how the user logged in so that you can make authorization decisions. So if you have questions on any of this, please feel free to drop a comment here uh, or email us at info at Thanks for listening.